before we start again? Hi, I'm Alex. Each week, we'll peel off another adherent crustacean off of the whale that is our lives. Hello and welcome to the episode one of the <laughs> weekly barnacle. <laughs> this is the best podcast. We're already the best. The best podcast you've ever seen. Oh, this Justin. Oh, sorry. This is Justin next to me. Hey, 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 we're, hey we're, we're brothers. We're brothers. Yeah. So we just figured we would try out the whole podcasting thing. Yeah, let's kind of give it a shot, just because we spend so much time watching podcasts together and talking about just weird stuff. <clears throat> I think I have plenty of, um, you know, content. <laughs> <laughs> just look at me. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, really, like, let's just kick it off. How, how are y'all doing? Let us know down in the comments and... Um, we know that there's a there's a virus, a creepy little crawl little virus. Yeah, I feel like that's a good way to timestamp a video from whatever like is happening outside. Like currently, this is during the coronavirus, and this has been like three weeks in the quarantine. Yeah, we're in. So I don't know when we'll post this. It might be tonight. Yeah, but um, but that's it, when this is actually occurring. Yeah, April fourteenth. So we have like a whole other month of quarantine, right? Yeah, we're we're almost a month in. So we're getting a little crazy, I'm trying to yeah. get some extra stuff. And the only reason that I'm not at home right now is it was his birthday, and so I came here and I and was kind of with him for his birthday during this whole thing. And also for my birthday, we're doing a podcast now. Yeah, the first podcast, which we've been talking about for a long time and wanting to do. Mm -hmm. So I think um, with the podcast, we can do some extra stuff that we've talked about for a long time, like our long neck giraffe. That kind of it's like these weird cartoon ideas that we've had and like skits. I think this would be a good place to put them. So, uh, do, do you have your little points up that you want to talk about? I don't have like the only points that I could really think of is just like different stuff with the coronavirus. But it's it's the only thing that I could really think about when I was thinking of points, but it's been talked about a lot and it just it, it gets boring. And that's the only thing they ever hear. Yeah, I mean we can talk about stuff that other people talk about or we can not. So I was thinking that, would, that might be fun. Yeah, I'd rather not, and just keep it fresh, so people aren't just fucking brain dead from hearing the same thing over and over again from mm -hmm. everyone. Okay, so, um, during, a good way to segue into what I want to talk about, actually, is explaining, like, I guess where we're at, because with the quarantine, with the coronavirus and everything that's going around, um, I, I got laid off, and so I've been trying to find work. I got a job at Amazon where I'm just doing manual labor for 12 hours. Yeah, That's, I, yeah. we actually, we both worked for Snuffers, which is like a restaurant. I don't know, is, local, is Snuffers local or is it like? It's only in Texas, yeah. It's yeah. like the DFW area. So if you're here, that's cool. Welcome. Yeah, we both, we both worked at Snuffers. I was a cook and he was more working towards being a manager. Mm. And uh, they didn't even tell me that I lost my job. I just came into my shift one day and they're like, yeah, you don't work here anymore, mm. which that was fantastic. Yeah, I was lucky enough. I had a key to the restaurant, so they said, "Hey, come give us your key because you don't work anymore." Yeah. So. And then, so at first, it was like, "We're taking, you know, we don't know how long this is going to be. Um, we will just let you know uh, and just give us your key because we're this like this specific location is closed now, so we can't have anybody that has a key, so they change the locks." And then, like the um, like the two days later, they were like, "Hey, everybody's laid off." So I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, working at Amazon, I have a lot of um, thinking time because at it was weird at, at Snuffers, I had like my, most of my job required me to be mentally there all the time. Yeah, Amazon, I can zone out, and so it has something to do with one of my topics. But um, it just, I feel like it, it helps me having somewhere where I can just mentally do whatever I want. Um, even though the job, by the way, if you work in Amazon, you probably know, it's not like, it's not, it doesn't feel like a long-term thing. I can't be doing that for a long time. I mean, some people might be able to do it just because they're okay with having mindless work where they just clock in and clock out. Yeah. And they don't really care about working, they just need something to survive. Some people are like... I mean, that's why I'm doing it now, yeah. but it's, uh, for me, it's not really a career path. So, um, anyway. One thing that I was thinking of, and I'll just start off with this, is I actually explained this to Jenna, 
and I wanted to talk to you about it. Okay. So, I, by the way, I don't actually know what this term means, and I, I think it used to be a meme, sort of. Okay. Okay? But, when you see somebody and you're like, I don't like you, like yeah. the first time you ever see them. Yeah. And they're a person where you're just like, I don't want to talk to you. I have a very good thing that I need to just basically keep going. And so, from this. so basically, you like, you're like, I don't want to talk to this person, and then they walk up to you, and before they say anything, you talk first, and you come out and you're like, hey, and you like, you puff your puff your shoulders out, and you're like, I don't talk to nobody unless they sneezing. I ain't see you sneezing over here, and basically in my mind, it's like the Michael Jackson, like, you're on your toes, like, that's sneezing, <laughs> sneezing on them, like. Why aren't you steezing? You try to talk to me and steezing, bro? Walk away. Turn yourself around and walk away. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever heard steezing used before in a sentence. What you, <laughs> <laughs> um, what you were saying at first, how like someone approaches you and you immediately have like a feeling. So there's like a German word where you see a face in as soon as you see that face, you want to punch that face. <laughs> and I couldn't find the word, but I just found the fucking sentence wanting to punch someone in the face in German. But it's a German word. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's hope you find that. So yeah. So I wanted to tell you that that's what I like. I was just walking. Ah. Uh, okay. On the so, dog's night. So it kind of it, like the meaning of the word is. Uh, the one is used to describe as a face that is in need of a good punch. <laughs> so like, pretty much what I was saying, and it's, oh fuck, that's a, <laughs> that's a rough one. It's quite a word. Back, fife, and schicht, geist, geist, something. That was probably horrible. Geisting. They, they don't have like a pronunciation thing. I can pump it into Google Translate <laughs> and say it for me. <laughs> well, we know there's a word now. I like trying because I took German. And it's been a minute. So yeah. So what what does that mean? Steezing? Steezing? I would mean like kind of like tripping. Something like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's kind of how I would use it. Like, why? Steezing. Pimping, pulling, the best shit you got, chilling. Steezing, so it's more like relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess my the way I use it, like, it wouldn't be too far off, right? I went off and posted the holy URL in Google Translate. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah, back five and busy. Kind of. That was kind of slurred, but. So yeah. You ever see someone you'd be like, back pipe and physique, and you're just like, steezing. You ain't steezing on me, bro. <laughs> you can talk words at me. And that comes into another point I want to talk about was, chew doom. Just chew doom. Just like, that is one word? Yeah. Okay. How do you think that would be spelled? C-H-U-D-O-O-N. See, I think it needs to be more emphasis on the sh noise, so I would put a T-C-U-H. C -U C H U T C H U Chu Chu Dom Dom Chu Dom Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, it could be Chu Dom Dom. Yeah. T C H U D E W N. All of the all the words you're bringing to the table here, they're very like they sound kind of Bostony, don't they? Kind of like sign words. And I <laughs> prefer the more southern approach where you just take four words and make one conjunction out of it, like Yaldov. <laughs> like Yaldov known about this beforehand. If you were southern, it's uh, Yaldov is an amazing conjunction. It's <laughs> the words you all would have, and it's a single word. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And then there's four apostrophes or three rather. That's urban dictionary. That Yaldov. Don't forget the apostrophes. Oh. <laughs> I found it with the apostrophes, there's three of them. Yeah, it's so you all would have. In southern United States, mostly. It's not, not even, in, like, you don't even have the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Google pumps it up straight away. 
<laughs> yeah, see, Google gives you the exact definition right there. Con contraction of you all would have. <laughs> There's a uh, item to. <laughs> and then a, a, a three word one, yaint. You and all. Yaint never. You ain't never. You have not ever. Yeah. Yaint. <laughs> ain't. Uh, ain't is are not. The Y is you. You so are. You are not ever. <laughs> but it would be used more slang wise. So it would be, you ain't never heard of this before. Interesting. <laughs> Altogether an interesting uh, concept we have of triple to quadruple. I found this one. I, I wanna. I wanna put this one um, on the video. Y'all has a tiny cowboy yeah, hat. So y'all find the exact image. Y'all is like a normal size cowboy hat, and then y'all of it's like a ten gallon. I'm huge I'm downloading the picture so I can overlay it in the video. Big boy hat. Now, I don't know if we can get this podcast somewhere where you can just hear it. For those of you, if you are listening and can't. So th this one adds, this one has a <laughs> couple more. Y'all have done it. Oh yeah, y'all have done it. Y'all have done it. Y'all have done it. I have one that has like a Scottish man standing there. Y'all have done it. Y'all have done it. And it says, y'all have he, he, who. <laughs> <laughs> this one says, you all tiny brain, y'all normal size brain, y'all have. It's like extra bright brain and then... When the brain is like bigger than the head, it says. I was about to like go post up to Moby for interrupting us. So, I also wanted to bring up a story that maybe some of you could relate to. Second topic. Okay. Alright? What's the most embarrassing, shameful, defeating thing that's ever happened to you? To me? Yeah. Like personally? Um, <laughs> that is one hell of a question to <laughs> ask someone and to like expect an answer that is open right, for right. everyone to hear. Well, what's what's something? <laughs> what is the the? I guess also we could add in funny element. Funny. Um. There, it's kind of a simple one. My uh, my uncle <clears> just like <throat> pants me, and I wasn't wearing underwear, and it was like in front of our. <laughs> Two very young cousins. Because Ellen and Hudson were both born at the time already. Oh no. And like they were standing right there and then he was just like, oh. Which uncle? Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> so he yanked him down. So our uncle's kids were just there. <laughs> Are you going to go somewhere with the topic or did you just want to ask me like because you were Oh no, my, because mine is a shower story. So no, you have a shower. I have a fantastic it's shower. It's pretty story. funny, but mine was it, it was it's funny because of what happened at my age, but also it was really the most defeating thing in my whole life. Okay, doing my normal thing, disrobe, turn the water on, get ready to go into the water. Yeah, and then slip, hit my side on the tub, <laughs> and out of there, the shower curtain falls on me, can't breathe. <laughs> And I'm just laying there. And the shower's hit the water's hit me <laughs> right in the face. How old were you when that happened? We lived uh, in West Haven. So I was in high school. Okay. That happened to me too, but I was eight. So I was much smaller. Yeah. But um, I was like almost two hundred pounds. I just <laughs> in my rib cage slammed into the side of the bathtub and then I just kept tumbling and tumbled all the way out of the bathtub and ended up on the bathroom floor. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, no, so no, that was so. So I hit right. I hit that, and I'm just laying there, like can't breathe. I'm just laying there, just like man, this is gonna be over eventually, and I might drown. So then Dad rushes in, and he's like, "Oh my God!" So he's got his his butt ass naked son laying in the bathtub, <laughs> just defeated. <laughs> so I have a very quick shower story. So I'm in the shower one day, right, and I'm like. I'm like about to beat my meat, right? <laughs> and I had just gotten it hard. And I, I was I was ready. 
like I was mentally ready, I was physically ready, and then I I sneezed, and like the force from my abdomen just forced me to nut instantly, but like it wasn't even like pleasurable. It, it just like forced the liquid out, and then, and then I was no longer ready. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I think it's kind of interesting, like a small channel, like this is literally our first video, so we don't have any following, and if someone, like, no one's going to see this, so that won't ever get reported or taken down, but if someone has a bigger following, if they were talking about something that inappropriate, they'd have to censor a lot of it, they wouldn't be able to get monetized, we don't even have to worry about that at the moment. That's good. Yeah. What I wanted to add was the, the song where he's like, plus a nut on a toes on a feet, <laughs> but like, just the part where he's like, so I'm beating my meat. <laughs> Dude, nothing good ever comes out of sneezing in the shower. I don't think so. Because like other times I've sneezed, it's been like blood just went all over the wall out of my like mouth and nose, mm -hmm. and that was pretty concerning because I don't get nosebleeds. So like, I don't really know what was going on that day. Yeah, one time I'm in high school, I like. I was like, man, I, did I have a booger or something? But I, I like did this, right? Just like, I don't have anything on my nose and I look blood. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So I get a tissue and I blow my nose. And it's just a, it looks like what I think to be big booger. And then everybody goes, dude, dude, you know what that is, right? Like, you know, you know what that is, don't you? No. It's a blood clot. Obviously. So you're gonna die. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I've always had really bad like drainage issues and really bad allergies with like the seasons. And um, I was walking with one of my friends in high school, we were going like over to the gym area. And um, <laughs> I coughed and just like a bunch of like mucus went into my mouth. And I was walking past the trash can and I just like spit it into the trash can, but part of it just flopped onto the floor. Oh. Dude. <laughs> but like, I don't, I didn't really know what to do in the situation, so I just walked away. Because I didn't know if like I, I should pick that up. <laughs> <But> like... <laughs> just whoever's trash can is, they'll get it. Like, the majority of it went in the trash can. Another story of me like spitting something out and it just being kind canes? of gross. Yeah, I was at oh. raising I was at raising canes, and um, I choke on food really easily for some reason. I think I might just have like a narrow throat or it's just like really sensitive. But I took like a bite of the of the bread and um, I like I swallowed it, and it got stuck like right right here, and I just kept on swallowing and swallowing. So spit was just like building up on top of it because nothing was getting past it or pushing it further down. So like my throat hurt because it was like swollen because it was just full of saliva, and then I, I like I I just coughed really hard, and all of the saliva just kind of flopped out of my mouth onto the floor, and the piece of bread that I was choking on was about the size of like a pencil eraser. You're just like, well, it's, yeah. it's such a pathetic amount of bread to choke on. You made it past it though, right? Barely. <laughs> like, I could breathe the whole time. It was just really uncomfortable because of, like, how much it had stretched out. What about the time that he was gonna make, he was gonna do a funny, right? Or in the garage, and he's just like, you wanna, you wanna hear something funny? <laughs> so he goes up to his, his bike is on a bike rack, and he I has one of those, like, cheap bike horns from, mm -hmm. uh, Walmart, but the, uh, this, like, the part that you squeeze, the kind of broken, and, like, the actual squeaking mechanism, had fallen into the part that you squeeze, and so I just took that off and had the squeaker in my hand, and you could like suck on it and blow on it and make the little squeaking noises. And so what I did was I put that back in the horn piece, and I was gonna go and inhale on that so that it would make a louder noise through the actual horn. I really hope that you can hear that in the video. Let me turn it up. So I went to inhale. <laughs> To make the sound, and then the, the little device just fell like right into my esophagus. 
I guess. It was in a weird spot. Could you swallow? I could swallow perfectly fine, and I could still breathe, but I'm guessing it was because wind could pass through it safely. <laughs> so every time that I would inhale, you would just hear that, that noise. <laughs> but no, it was, it was really just this one. Just the, like the, yeah, it, it wasn't like the huh it was just the huh. Was it when you... It was in the right, it was, it was, it would make the noise in the right inhale. Yeah, it? yeah. And so like, the first thing I think is, like, my brother's gonna die. And the first thing he thinks is, this is just my life now. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I, I was laughing hysterically. He was, he was ready to just have that be a part of who he was. The way that I got it out, in case anyone else is ever in this scenario, and it worked for me, I'm not a doctor. But it worked for me. I just inhaled for a tremendously long time, and the whole time that I was inhaling, it was a constant pitch of like the. <laughs> and so I just inhaled for a really long time until like my lungs were full, and then I just exhaled everything all at once, and it just launched out of my mouth, and there was blood on it, mm -hmm. which was very uh, pleasing to see. It was just nice that it was out though. It was good By the way, blood. it w it was like one of the scariest things because like if something had blocked it, he's choking. Yeah. Like, I don't know how the fuck, I'm not going to do the Heimlich, but we couldn't, like, like, we could shine a light in this throat, you can't see it, so I know I can't yeah. get it out of my finger, right? And, uh, so I would have just done the Heimlich and hoped, but he got it out. But the thing was, is, that was so hard about it, is it was hilarious. Yeah. Because he's just sitting there talking, and then every time he takes a breath in, just, <laughs> just... Yeah, so, you know, I was... Yeah, it was every time I went to inhale, you just hear the little noise. And it was really convenient because, like, we were doing that on our way to get in the car because we were going to a Joe Rogan, like, stand Oh, that's show. when we did that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, by the way, Joe Rogan Live is really, like, I'll, it's I think the energy is a lot different than watching him on, a, like, on his I've, podcast. I've watched, well, not just podcasts, but I've watched his live stand, or, or not, I've watched his stand up on, like, Netflix, right? But seeing it live, he, it's like way funny. Plus, I was drinking. So yeah. I had something to do with it. But also, like, uh, Joe Rogan doesn't usually hold my attention very well. And um, it, it, just, it doesn't really, like, interest me very much watching his podcast and stuff on the internet and then seeing his stuff on Netflix. But being there live and having the energy of the crowd, and, like, it feels like he's actually talking to you and involving you. Yeah. And also, his, by the way, I think people, like, um, they they sleep on these openers because his opener his opener was, was really fun. I don't, I don't know, know the guy. I don't know his name. Let's was. look up his name so we can credit him. I still have yelled up on my screen. Because <laughs> he is. Uh... Oh, what? can't find his name. Anyways, dude, koi fish are crazy. Koi fish? Yeah. Like, people have been selectively breeding fish for years. Like, koi is pretty much completely human-made. Really? Like, it didn't exist naturally. Yeah. How do you spell that? C-O-Y or something? No, K-O-I. And so, like, there's, um, if you look at, like, prices of koi fish, they're ridiculously expensive. Oh, those are like the big ones that you see in yeah. ponds or... It is just, I so, mean, I, is, it, is it like a goldfish and a bass? Uh, I think it's just different breeds of goldfish. Because it's mouth... No, it's a uh, carp. And I don't know what to say that. It's A-M-U-R, carp. It's kept for decorative purposes. Mar? But, um, a mar. A mur. Mar. Something mar. along those lines. But, um, yeah. Koi fish are... Like, this is a $100,000 koi fish. Which is like that's crazy. One point eight million dollars for that koi fish, just because people put so much time into like breeding different lines of the koi fish to get these super specific patterns. So they're like, like I'll they're like I'll see the fucking overlay. They're like what ball pythons look like now. Uh, here, look. Because you can get like those are all like, those are all just different koi fish. Yeah. Have you seen the different ball pythons? No, I haven't. It doesn't seem as opener is. Anyway, but back, real quick, touch back on it. I can't find his name. You know who you are. He's really funny, and he's like, 
he uh, it was the Dallas show for we were in Joe Dallas Logan. yeah at the American Airlines Center and we saw him and uh, he was really funny and his opener killed it he just came out like swinging yeah just making all these crazy jokes I'm, and, a, I'm a big supporter of like nothing is off limits in comedy and like, he, you should he joke about anything yeah, and he, he joked about everything he, he didn't really go back at all there was nothing that he well, saw as off limits what I thought was cool about it is he kind of set the stage to be like set the bar as far as offensiveness goes here, and then Jorgen yeah. comes and his stuff can be offensive. Yeah, it can be offensive to some people, but after you like have that opener, you're like, way more rash stuff. than him. Yeah. Jorgen seems perfectly PC. And what I think also would be cool is like, you have those people in the, in the crowd who are like, yeah, say something, and he's gonna get those people to leave, and then Jorgen comes out, he's just yeah. got a good crowd. Because people who are offended by things like, you're going into somewhere looking to be offended, that's a choice mm -hmm. that you make yourself. Especially if you're going to see a comedian. Yeah. Like, you, you know, you're going to joke about like, stuff. It's okay to take things seriously, but you also you need to kind of lighten up because there's no point in taking everything that seriously. You need to have a good time. There's no point in just constantly being just upset. Did you hear more about the quote fish? No, I just thought about koi fish because I saw it in my recently searched. Oh. I've been looking at uh, lever actions too. I think lever actions are really, really pretty. Like the lever action rifles. Yeah. For your food. I think I'm looking at Winchesters. Okay, here it is. So we've been playing Warzone, obviously, with the quarantine going on. Everybody has been playing video games more. And I don't usually play video games because I don't have time, but um, we've been getting into a couple things. And we wanted to actually play video games on the podcast, but we don't really know how to tie that in yet. So let us know, actually, if you'd like to see that. Yes. Yeah, we, we're not super good at games, like... We have our moments where we kind of like pop off and we'll do good, but... Justin is overall better than I am yeah. in every video game. We're just playing to have a good time and so that yeah. there's something to kind of keep the pace going of a video. Mm -hmm. And so if you think that that would be good, let us know. We're open for doing that. Can you tell we have our gaming mouses? I just gave him that for the Yeah, this is my birthday present right here. Now. Really cool. But yeah, look at this. Here. Here. It's blue, forged steel. Just, just gorgeous. And another thing that you were talking about before before we started was um, the blacksmith guy, right? Oh yeah, uh, Alex Steele. He's this. Uh, he's he's a YouTuber. He has like three million or two million. One of those subscriber counts. He's fantastic. The thing that I was really surprised about was like how pretty just steel can be. Yeah, like, like this what, guy, what he um, makes is crazy. An easy guy to go look at his work to go see like just the true beauty of steel and like the craft and shit up is uh, Royer, R O Y E R, blades, and um, he makes beautiful stuff. He's a master smith. I think it's that. It corrected to roller blades instead of roller <laughs> blades. <laughs> Like, the thing I'm trying to say in Spanish, Royer, Royer, <laughs> Royer Blades, por favor. I want to find the, there's a super specific level. Oh, wow. What yeah. is that? That's called the Explosion? I don't know what that one's called. I know that one other expe like specific metal. Yeah, do yourself a favor and look up where it was on. I can insert an image or two. Yeah, we can put them on. Stuff. But you need to see this like on your own screen so you can, I don't know. Because uh, Kyle Royer Knives dot com, that is crazy. Because it's just metal, you know. Yeah. But and that pattern is like forged into the steel. Like when you sharpen it, it's underneath everything, so it's gonna have the same. Well, pattern. it is the steel. So the way Damascus is, is you put a bunch of like the way you start it is you get different like plates of different kinds of steels, and you just stack those on top of each other. And then you would weld all of that together, and then just smush them into each other. So it's called like a forge weld, and you pretty much just fuse all the metal together at once by like crushing it and making so it solid. I'm assuming the different patterns is like different ways that it bends whenever you're crushing it. So like, so you start with like the weird square. Mm. You know what creates the explosion pattern? You turn it diagonally, 
and then it puts waves in it, and then you can like compress it. I don't know how to do it, but I know kind of some basics. Yeah, he was showing me the videos of how they were doing it, and this guy, he just is having fun, but like, that's so, that there takes so much talent. This is crazy. So yeah, that's cool. So, our next, our next topic. I'm gonna keep looking for this gun, so I'll talk to you. Our next topic that I wanted to get into right quick is uh, this Daddy Trump stimulus bill. Stimulus bill? You heard of that? I have not like read it or anything. So it's the um, the virus, it's the stimulus bill. And a lot of you watching have probably heard of it, if you're watching, like all two of you. But um, it's supposed to, it's like, like around 800 to 1200 bucks, I think depending on your income range. And they approved like $2 million to give to Americans. So I was thinking, you know, it's cool because you can pay rent and stuff, but because I have a job, I can pay that. I think what I'm gonna use it for is um, learning how to do appraisals. Here we go, here's that rifle. Doing rules that we have. But a rule that we have on being a man is before you can be your own man and actually be a man. You have to make your own axe. Yeah, craft forge, sharpen, build your own, handle everything. Because the tools that it requires to make that are tools that you'll need in life. Yeah. And um, it's also, it's a very experienced person has to be able to do that because going into it, you're not gonna know very much, but coming out of that, you're gonna have a lot more experience working in an actual shop and doing all of those things. Because I think a lot of people now don't like, have... Not to say that you're not a man if you don't do those things on a daily basis, because we don't do that on a daily basis, but I feel like it, it's a it's knowledge that should be passed down mm. through generations because yeah. it's just like We're basic using. knowledge on how to make simple tools that you, you could yeah. use. That's true because I mean most people how do you how do you get a tool you go to Home Depot where you order an Amazon or something right? Yeah, and it's hard to keep on expanding on the advanced stuff if you don't even understand the basics. Yeah, that makes sense because I mean we're losing that part. People are just taking advantage of it, and that's also why. People are taking advantage of it, but they're getting taken advantage of because they're, they're people who can just make that stuff, you know? Yeah. And a lot of the stuff is pretty overpriced whenever you go to buy those items. And not but just because of what they are, but because of how, like, most of the items are just crap. Yeah. But there are, like, good items out there that you can get, like, mm -hmm. uh, the Grand, Grand Swords Brooks, I think is how you pronounce it. At least it should be close, but it's these, these handmade axes and they're amazing quality. Like you buy it, it's razor sharp, good shape with it. And they're, they're beautiful axes. And I only heard of them from the Wrangler Star, which is another YouTuber who does like woodworking and that sort of thing. He's fantastic. And he, mm -hmm. he's also taught me a few life lessons and kind of helped me shape my own opinions on the world. He's, he's, yeah. he's a great guy. And Very wholesome. Yeah, he treats talking to his viewers more as a family than he does just people on the internet. Which is cool. I feel like it's a much closer bond that you would have with him than most others. So, I don't really know what else I had to add to this, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it, I don't know. Why so that's one of the rules. One of the other rules: if you throw up in your mouth and it doesn't come out of your mouth, it goes back. Down. You have to swallow it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, if, say it fills up your cheeks. It doesn't come out of those lips. You have to take several swallows, get it all back down. <sighs> yeah, now that one, that, if, that if does it, apply to everyone. If it comes out a little bit, all of it has to come out. Yeah, if it even slightly breaches, yeah. it's either like it's either full retreat or full send. That's it. Two options. You have to pick one. You yeah. don't let a little bit out. You don't just keep a little bit in. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having trouble remaining serious. Um, it's a pretty popular image. The background that I have for my Google Chrome like browser is just the crab holding the steak knife. And so I keep looking at my computer and seeing that. Oh, I, I wanna, that made me think of something. So his backgrounds on his Google and stuff, um, he uses those, so you like switch them out, right? Yeah, I haven't done it in a while just cause I haven't thought about it, but. But he's been playing Clone Hero? Yeah. It's such 
It's basically just like Guitar Hero, but completely like fan run, I think. I don't know. I don't know much of like the behind the scenes, but it's just basically Guitar Hero for the PC, and you can like make songs for it and download other people's songs and whatnot. And um, uh, whenever you're setting it up, because it doesn't have any of the backgrounds that Guitar Hero, the Guitar Hero normally has, so we took like I took a bunch of pictures from the internet that are just really random and just like goofy pictures, and I can probably put some in like on the screen, but. Um, I just made them the backgrounds because they make me laugh. And it's kind of, I want to like one of them is just like a long text meme, and I want to read it while I'm playing Guitar Hero. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if it's the best thing to have. That was my the first time I played Clone Hero, and it's like been years since I played Guitar Hero at all. Yeah. So I'm trying to play, so, and, and there's got like this Shrek looking at me. Yeah. And I'll show you all these and post like we'll put them on. Just you got Shrek looking at me. He's got what a cop who's a, a goose or what was the what's your cop picture? The cop okay it's we'll put it up there, but it's just like two cops chasing after a, go, a, a goose. <laughs> they put the goose head on the cop, <laughs> the cop head on the goose. <laughs> so it's like he stole his head and he's running away with it. <laughs> and the cop's like no. Oh. And then the Shrek. <laughs> I have a couple of different Shreks. One of them is just titled "Fuck." <laughs> that one. That one gets it's me. like it's this weird statue of Shrek. God. <laughs> That's my favorite one. I, I I'm just gonna put this one on screen for sure. I don't wanna have to read that or explain it. But <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I'm gonna skip my next one because I don't have I need my phone to look at it. Okay. Um, it's gonna be rating, but we can make like a whole video just about that. Okay. But. <sighs> okay, so when you when you do new things, do you yawn? Well, all yawning in is you trying to cool off your brain, and then the other biological sense for yawning is signaling to the other humans around you that it's time to go to sleep. Cause I'm not tired. Every time I do like um, it. Anytime, first day of school, job, first time going to the doctor in a while, or dentist, or whatever. Well, yeah, your brain's really active during those because it's all new experiences, so it's mm -hmm. learning a lot. So it starts to overheat, and so you yawn, and it cools it all off. So, yeah. So my brain overheats a lot. Yeah, well, we both have, you have ADHD, and I have ADD, so we get distracted very easily. Yeah. It's a whole mess going on. So, next thing. After the one that I'm gonna skip, which we can make a whole other video on, I think it'll be pretty entertaining. But this one is um, just one simple question, Justin. Mm -hmm. How much tuna is too much tuna? For like a single person? Like, let's say you're ordering it from Amazon. Ordering canned tuna. Okay. How, what's the sh shelf life on tuna? <laughs> I can tell you the answer. I, 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 I want to give you a guess. I have a definitive I want to give you my guess on what would be too much tuna. Okay. So currently in my house, we have four packages of the like cans of tunas, but it's the ones that have like three separate stacks of like a bunch of cans of tuna. And the shelf life on tuna is three to five years. So you only need to buy tuna every three to five years. Oh, God. <laughs> so you're eating some five-year-old marinated tuna and, and that can getting all those flavors from the metal. From the water and metal. So I think about probably like 30 cans of tuna is too much to buy at once. Okay, so so we agree. You think 30? N no, less than 78. <laughs> <laughs> so at Amazon... My job is like picking things and putting them in totes and I send them to get boxed, right? That's all I do. <laughs> and one order had 70, and it was like the big packages, right? But it was 78, I counted, total cans. Yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous. And I assume this lady's name has to be Karen. Karen, that's too much tuna. Dude, she might want to talk to your manager, be careful. That's fine. Talk to him and he'll tell you, you ordered too much tuna. I don't care if it's for your family. It's, it's a lot of tuna. Or is all you eat tuna? You're gonna get Freddie Mercury poisoning. It's because tuna. 
You can only have so much of it. <laughs> but yeah, that's so. I don't know if I ever mentioned it. Leads into my next topic, which is like, you get that much tuna, to do <laughs> Hey, I don't know if I ever mentioned it earlier. Um, I lost my job in the snuffers. I was a cook, by the way. I don't know if I said that either. Yeah, you did. Okay. I was, yeah, I did say that. I was a cook, and um, I got laid off from snuffers, and I'm doing DoorDash right now. Like, just kind of just in the in-between until I find another job. And that's kind of a weird thing. Yeah. I feel like, like for me, because well, I was getting ready to go into management to move to move from like a good hourly rate to salary, right? Yeah. So I went from that to starting over. And don't get me wrong, right now Amazon's paying pretty well. But I'm at square one again. So it yeah. But the weirdest experience I've had with DoorDash so far was a problem that I ran into. Um, I got this order for this lady. I don't remember her name, and even if I did, I wouldn't say it because I don't think I'm supposed to do that. But I went to the restaurant, which was Sonic. I don't care if they get offended. It's not a very good food establishment. <laughs> and all of my friends who've ever worked there, it was a horrible experience. They're not good to their employees. But uh, I went to Sonic, and then the fucking manager comes out, and he's like younger than I am. And he's like, hey, we don't even have DoorDash. Like, he was like telling me that he doesn't have it set up yet, but I still had an order. And mm-hmm. so I had to call that lady and tell her that I couldn't deliver her her food because they didn't make it for me. And then she reported me for not taking her her food. And I had to report Sonic for not giving me food. Instead of it all being one report towards the Sonic place. Because yeah. she knew what was happening. Yeah. Did you call her before? Yeah, I, mean, I called her like as soon as I could. Yeah. And then it still made me drive to her house to complete my delivery. Do you know, okay, so we ordered, we ordered Uber earlier, yeah. and we got the food, um, is this like, is it procedure, do you take picture, a picture of where you deliver the stuff? That might be an Uber Eats thing, okay. um, I haven't done that. If y'all know about it, let me know, because... I think thinking, that it might have just been because there was issues with the whole delivery. Like, he had to call us a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. He barely spoke English. Yeah. Well, Which, that, cause he got the food here, and he communicated everything really well. So he yeah. was good, right? But the... I wasn't trying to slander anyone who doesn't speak English. Yeah. It was just, like, it was hard to communicate with him. No, he called... He should have texted, I think. Yeah. But Because he called in, like... I understand, like, two words out of what he said, but yeah. we figured it out. But he's trying. He, he was trying impressed. really hard, but the place we ordered from, check in the box... Did a really bad job. Yeah, I think Jack in the Box was trying to close. We kind of did order food at like 11 p.m. And stuff is quarantined, yeah, so it's I mean, closing early. If, if but... you're closing, let me know. I can cancel the order. <laughs> but they made it, and then they waited until he got there. Yeah, they waited until our Uber Eats delivery driver got to the restaurant to actually start cooking the food. So we had to wait even longer. And then they, I had to read yeah, out the, the order to them because they didn't, they didn't have the order, which. That, that happened to me a few times in Snuffers when I was a cook. The order would never make it back to the kitchen because people would yeah, bring it in. Yeah, but, but, so I understand that. But she had the tablet because she was reading it to me. Yeah. And she didn't read the whole order. Yeah, she only read like half of it. So I'm like, she probably didn't scroll the screen, which, I don't know. Work, being a manager, working with that stuff, it's like that stuff really bothers me because it's so easy. Yeah, it's such a... And if that's literally your job. Especially right now with everything that's going on, that should be their main focus is to go, that's, that's all you can do. Really. Yeah, and like being in the kitchen... I have simultaneously a lot of sympathy whenever I'm at a restaurant, and but I also have like standards. Yeah, the, the like the bare minimum that should be accomplished whenever you're making someone food. I do understand that it's Jack and Box, so it is fast food. I'm not really expecting too much. Yeah, I'm just here to eat my horse meat and continue. <laughs> okay, but yeah, the only other thing I have is like comic book ideas. Oh yeah, just I don't know if you wanted to talk about it. I told you kind of about mine. I think a good baseline for us to start up talking is just like, just kind of comic book heroes that we enjoy and just kind of discuss that and kind of branch off from there. So, I mean, I feel like my favorites are the staple comic book characters. Yeah. Um, the most like, so obviously like my favorite- big screen boys? Yeah, I guess so. I like Batman, Superman. I like DC comics more. Yeah. Um, 
even though Marvel Comics has better um, live action movies, I think DC Comics, I like the characters better. I mean, I like DC Comics more, but the Marvel movies are so much better. Yeah. But there's like, there's a few Marvel characters that like, they can never be replaced. And I'll always like them more than a lot of the DC characters in that universe. Mm -hmm. Like Ghost Rider, there's nothing I could ever do to replace him with a DC character. And like Thor, I love Thor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Thor is awesome. like Spider-Man. Spider-Man, so my favorite like Marvel would have to be like Spider-Man. I really like Wolverine. And Captain America. Yeah. Because he's simple, you know? Yeah. And he's kind of like the most patriotic hero out of any man. I think he, he also, like, the reason why I like him and Superman. Yeah. Is because it's someone who you can strive to be. So they're like a. Yeah. And I, I kind of see that same thing in Spider Man is that he's just like a really good role model for people to base their, like, yeah. morals off of. He's, he's, he and, like, Batman are good examples of what you can make yourself even though you have bad consequences or bad scenarios you start with. Yeah. And um, I really do like the characters Batman and Iron Man. I, I like them especially too, like because they are, reasons. they are just normal human beings. They mm -hmm. don't have any special abilities or powers, but they still like will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the most formidable foes. Which is funny because like when you look at the Justice League, you have Batman who is fighting... He had, who did he shoot? Was it a uh, dark side? I think it was. Yeah. He shot him with a bullet that could hurt him. Yeah. But then, uh, <laughs> but then, like, they know they don't they don't take Green Arrow on the same mission. <laughs> yeah. And um, Batman's also on a different level. Iron Man was the only one who drew blood from Thanos. Yeah. In the first movie. And they they made that a thing. Well, except with well after, he was the first one to do it. But Thor also drew blood because yeah. he fucking drove an axe into his chest. Um, <laughs> that they really a, need to flush out Thor in those movies. He is so much more powerful than they're portraying him. I mean, I think Thor four will probably show that. Yeah, but it's gonna move on to Jane Foster Thor instead of oh. Odinson. Yeah, I mean, in the movies, I feel like some characters, like Captain America, you might make a little bit more powerful, so he stands out a little bit, and then some. Characters like Thor, you make less powerful. But so that, even so, Thor in the comics, and I mean Captain America in the comics, was still like really fucking strong. Yeah, but he couldn't like the stuff that he does in the movies is he has way more power than he would in the comics. Yeah, I guess. But because in the comics, I don't know. Basically, in the movies, they're they're using so many characters that to make the fight the most interesting, they want to level the playing field as, as closely as they can where, where certain characters are still more powerful. Yeah. Because I think, one, the comprehension on screen to the audience is going to be a lot harder. And a good example of them having to level the playing field was it was very much on purpose that they got Thor out of the picture before they made Civil War. Because if Thor was, I'm not Thor, Hulk, they got yeah. him out of the picture before Civil War. And I guess Thor too, he wasn't there. Was he? Thor, yeah. Ragnarok? Oh, two. Yeah, Civil War. T Civil War. Wait, yeah. Oh, Thor was yeah. it? No. Thor and Hulk were out of it because yeah. whatever team they were on would have won. Yeah. And I feel like Thor would have just kind of stayed out of it anyways because he's not, it's not his problem. He's, he's not a human. Above that. He's not an earthbound person. Yeah. He's going to let them. Whoever team, whoever's team Hulk is on is just going to win. Mm -hmm. He's just an unbridled force of un literally unlimited strength. Only limited to as far as his anger goes, which is seemingly mm -hmm. infinite. Yeah. And I think it'd be cool if they really did movies on just Hulk and got into like the psyche of the character. I, really like I the think comics. the reason why they don't is because those movies like never really go super well. And there's a. Who's I feel like where the Marvel Universe is now, though, with the cinematic stuff, they could do it they and could. be successful. I think they could. But they'd have to still. Instead, so, with characters like him, I think you need to tie other people in um, so you can make it a coherent story because of the knowledge that people have over who you've put on screen so far. Yeah. Because. Um, it's at the point where they like need to include the cameos and have everyone involved so mm -hmm. it stays one coherent. Well, yeah, you want it to feel like it's in the actual world they're in. So like yeah. any movie where they're gonna be on their own, you need to either have somebody else with them or explain why they're by themselves. The reason why I like DC comics is because each person has their own like place that they're staying. 
Yeah. Which is like the different cities of this game. Kind of like, yeah. Like Metropolis and Gotham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I kind of appreciate that it is fictional cities because it sets its, it can set its own standard for like crime. Yeah. And how bad it is or how perfect it is in terms mm -hmm. of like Metropolis, which is like a utopia, I think. Close, close to, um, I feel like Gotham is just the epitome of corrupt. Yeah. And, uh, but what I like about that is like Batman's problems that he has like with the, um, the League of Shadows and stuff. He doesn't, he doesn't, like, he could ask Superman to come help, but then it wouldn't be a story. Yeah. But also, the thing I love about those characters, like, Batman would never ask him to help. Yeah. He's like, I can do this on my own. Yeah. But then you get different characters who have their relationships, and it makes it so much better that they have their relationship, like, with Iron Man and Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a really cool thing that they fleshed out on screen. Yeah. I'm it glad was they did that. really well done. And also, I want to say, um, Marvel Comics, there's, like, so many random stories that it's like hard to keep up with, right? Yeah. DC has a lot of arcs that are easier to follow. Yeah. Marvel Comics has like huge arcs, but that take place over so many comics, you have to like read all of them. Yeah. And it's kind of hard. But what I like about the, they took all the best ideas and put them on screen. With DC, they just don't know what to do. Yeah, DC seems pretty scrambled, so. Mm -hmm. And they're about to have to pretty much restart their whole universe because they have a different Batman and Ben Affleck drop Yeah. Out. I think they're just gonna try like if if he it's it might be like the Nolan series where it's by itself. Yeah. But if it is and that's cool. But they like, But I think if it does well they're gonna like add people in. Um the thing I'm curious about is Henry Cavill hasn't been like fired off of the role of Superman. Yeah. I think he's gonna keep doing it. I don't But I'm just curious how how do you how are they going to explain that away? Because they already have like somewhat of a universe built. Like mm -hmm. they already have like the Harley Quinn still tied into the Justice League and everything. Mm -hmm. And that Batman has interacted with that Harley Quinn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like it's going to be. He's been in her movie already. So if they did the like the kind of arch story where they would need Ben Affleck to come back for it and kind of do it, but if they did the thing where like Batman Beyond kind of does, where it's an older Batman kind of shows a young Batman kind of the ropes. But that's it's not, not that's not, um, from what I've heard about the movie, the new Robert Pattinson Batman, they're basically given like a year one, year two Batman. Yeah. But it's based like in the past. But the, I, I, it's, I just don't know how they'd be able to tie them together. And that's the thing is, I think they might not. I think they'll just keep, they might just keep them separate. So, but then how what does that mean for the DC universe? Like, how do they explain that? Does the DC universe just not have a Batman anymore? Do they kill him? Do they do a Flashpoint event where when they come back it's an alternate timeline and it's a different Batman? They could do that. That would be a good way to... Because, you know, in the Snyder cut, Snyder universe, you know the Flash came back. Yeah. And he's like, Bruce, Lois is the key. Yeah. Well, what Snyder's original idea was, was to make that like like a Flashpoint event where that goes into the... So basically he was giving himself this... options in the early movies to make those bigger arches. Yeah, no, he wanted to make it epic, because yeah. that's all he does. Um, but what they could do is, like, make the Flash go back in time, and when he comes back, like, he's completely destroyed their timeline, and so they go to, like, the the new real timeline, and it's just different. Yeah. That way they could do, like, they could change some things that people don't like. They could also make the, so, if they're changing direction with the directors and everything, they could make the whole universe, like, the um the theme more up up like uh uplifted and spirited like the marvel universe has so the dc is always dark yeah marvel is a little bit brighter and yeah. so i think if they're looking to do that kind of feel they can do that if they go to a different universe and if you guys aren't really like up to date or if you're not up to date with comics and you really want to kind of get your like feeling under you with that kind of knowledge and you're interested in it, a really good channel to go check out is Comics Explained. He does a fantastic job of like just, he pretty much just reads the stories to you in a way that's engaging and he keeps you interested. If you want to be part of the Rob core. Yeah. Yeah, he is, he is, uh, he is the one, like I was listening to a video, were you with me? Oh. I don't know. But he basically was like, he's like, well, let's talk about if this, like let's do our own weather story. And he just made a comic up. Yeah. On the spot. He, he has such an in-depth knowledge and like and then understanding like, he has a whole series where he does that with mm -hmm. like the what it's like um like he, the one like I the, watched was a specific one I he had a whole series of like what if characters got the red lantern ring 
And it was like Darth Vader and like Batman. Oh wow. And all kinds of characters like Hulk, who wouldn't mm-hmm. be dead or a lantern ring. And he includes all the features that like a red lantern ring gives to someone. Like it turns your blood into like liquid rage. Hmm. And he gives them all of these all he adds all of those the, those abilities to what the character already has and he kind of explains what all havoc they would have on the planet and then how the planet would end up defeating them or how they'd be defeated mm-hmm. in the end. So he kind of has a whole circle for the story. That's cool. Again, and then. It's cool just, he can just do that. Yeah, he's... The one I wouldn't watch was, um, what if the Beyonders from the Marvel Universe came into the DC Universe? And I didn't get very far in some of those, he, he will take images and Photoshop them together so that it looks like a comic book panel. And it yeah. looks like it's an actual Well, book. the cool thing that he did in that one was he took certain comic book panels with characters and then like the text box he just took the words out yeah and so and then he could type because like, just leave it blank he was leaving them blank and put and saying what they would say yeah and then just like having sequences of certain characters he wanted to put in but he used recent pictures so like it all looked like he was reading from a comic like um when he explains a, an actual comic he uses the panels of the comic yeah it's just he he's uh he's really like He's a really nice channel. It's really cool. So, well, I don't have any more points after that. Yeah. And we've been running for a while, so I don't know how long it's been. Um, let us know if you want if you want like a whole hour or if you want less or. Yeah, or, and then if like there's certain topics that you want us to kind of stray away from, mm-hmm. like I would prefer to just kind of stay away from politics in general. I don't really talk about that on the podcast. Yeah. Just keep it neutral. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I mean, it's whatever y'all want to hear, we'll try to talk about more. So yeah, that this was episode one. Kind of a trial of run of... The Weekly Barnacle. Yeah. Which is the name I just made up off the spot. <laughs> oh, and I didn't play the intro music. I'll play the outro music then. Are we ready? Yep. Yeah. So this is going to be it, y'all.